Welcome back to the Buds in the Box podcast. The Leafs win 2-1 to one against the Montreal Canadiens in Game 3, Round 1, and take the series lead 2-1. to one. Um, To summarize the game, you know, the Leafs played really well in the first period. So did the Habs. It was kind of an even first period. Leafs completely dominated in the second period, and then the Habs dominated in the third period, but the Leafs outplayed them defensively, and they ended up getting the win thanks to Jack Campbell. How did you, what did you guys think about the game tonight? I thought the Leafs just uh, showed that they can play through adversity. I mean, right before the game, they they uh, found out that they're playing without another one of their top six forwards, which makes two top six forwards out of the lineup and two of the more important leaders uh, of the group. You know, we knew Tavares wasn't obviously playing, but then to find out that Felino wasn't playing, uh, it's hard. It's, you know, it's, it's tough because uh, he's someone that they picked up at the deadline to play in the playoffs basically right so uh but the team battles through adversity and i just thought william nylander uh has just completely taken over uh as a star player so and he's doing exactly what he needs to do so it was good to see everyone kind of overcome uh some adversity that they're already facing three games in yeah for sure well i mean like felly just said willie Willie Styles, three and three right now. I mean, he's Willie Stye. Yeah, and and you know they, they <laughs> Willie Stye, they uh, they had a stat in the game. We all probably saw it about the uh, the most on any goalie was nine goals for Nylander, which is pretty crazy. So uh, that's a good stat for us to continue going on in these uh, playoffs. That's just a good game overall. A um, couple of players that I mean, we'll get to the end. Actually, we'll say that for the end, our our MVP. So stick to the end, guys, uh, for our MVPs. Yeah. Uh, I have three stars again. Yeah, all right. I got one, so. Because they won. Um, yeah. Won. And, yeah. Um, uh, Eric, you can't have the same one as last time, by the way. What? Uh, but but for sure, I, and now getting into that, that's uh, that's Campbell versus Price. That's a showdown, and uh, and and you know what? Campbell comes out on top, and I, I, I'm, I'm happy every day that happens. So it was a great game. Yeah, and of course, we always want to hear your guys' opinion on the game. So let us know in the comments below. Um, and just before we get started uh, going into the game, as you guys know, we are being sponsored by Manscaped. So you can go to manscaped.com and use code BUDS20 to get 20% off and free shipping. Guys, they have they're the best men's grooming brand. So if you um, are into that or, you know, it's a great gift. Father's Day is coming up. Make sure to use our code BUDS20 for 20% off and free shipping anything, any products. Um, and now the game, the first period, I, I said it was a little bit slow. And these guys always make fun of me for for that because, you know, it wasn't really slow. Obviously, it's a playoff game. But, um, you know, I like I like fast-paced hockey entertainment. So I'll say it's slow. Um, Galchenyuk did get a four-minute penalty, like two minutes or a minute into the game, um, which, I mean, was a, was a pretty bad start. But we did kill the penalty kill. I, I think our penalty kill is like 10 for 10. So that's obviously amazing. If our penalty kills go on, our, our power plays go in, that's obviously amazing. Um, did you guys have any, like, noticeable thing in the first period? Because that's real, all I really had. Well, I mean, the point you just made uh, about Kalchenyuk, he he looked right away that he wasn't mentally there in the game. He first shift, he steps on the ice, and he was, like, 10 feet offside. Uh, <laughs> he had no idea where the puck was. And then two seconds later, the puck drops from his offside – and he high sticks uh, Gallagher right in the face. So um, maybe some some bad blood there. Who knows? They were on the same team before. Literally um, and figuratively. <laughs> yeah. So so obviously Gallagher is going to go down and act like a bit of a crybaby because that's kind of the type of player he is. You know, not not to be too like um, blatantly mean or anything, but he's. He, he is known for that. You know, he is known for being the type of guy like, like that. So of course he's going to go down and, and act like uh, he's extremely injured to, to get that four minute penalty. And he was, his lip was a little cut, but yeah, I mean, he's showing the ref is <laughs> he's showing the ref is his lip, but, but that was immediately, I thought Gelchanik didn't look like he was into it. And that four minute penalty wasn't a great start, um, but the Leafs killed it off. Uh, as they have been in Campbell, had a great first period. I don't really have any complaints about the first period, so. Jude, 
Anything about the first period? No, that's it. You guys uh, topped it off. Pretty good period. Yeah, and uh, I just I just want to give a warning. If if we do sound like we're tired, it's because we are. We're recording this at like 3 a.m. because the Edmonton Oilers game just finished and the Jets. And um, we just wanted to see, you know, scouting out the competition for next round. So, um, but anyways, um, the second period, uh, hold on. I, I actually had a few notes here, so I'll pull them up. Um, seven minutes in, Nylander scores a goal. <laughs> Um, the lenders course goal from Kerfoot. And I think the biggest thing to take away from this goal, uh, was the face-offs. They won a quick face-off and, um, unfortunately I had to spoil the goal for the boys because we were watching off a delayed stream, <laughs> but, um, they, they won the face-off. Nylander took a shot off the face-off and they scored. Um, there, I don't know like the exact stats and stuff, but we we always see like Matthews was like 19 and three in the face-offs, right? Feli? Yeah, there was some stat with. When it was Matthews against Dano, uh, who Dano also has been completely unnoticeable in this series. Uh, and he's basically only known for being a shutdown centerman and winning draws. But him and Matthews this series, Matthews has won 19 and Dano has won like three. So uh, I think that's the number. That was like the number halfway through the second period. So it's probably similar still. Um, but yeah, that's the number. Yeah, I, I'm very, I was very critical throughout the entire year about the Leafs losing defensive faceoffs, especially even offensive ones. Um, and then like three seconds later, you know, the other team scores off a, a defensive faceoff in the Leafs zone. So it's awesome to see that the Leafs are winning faceoffs, winning tons of faceoffs when they're when it's important and it matters and that they're turning it into opportunities. And, you know, that was one of the biggest goals of the game to get to get the scoring open, to get the momentum flowing. So, big goal by Nylander. Did you guys have any other thoughts on that goal? No, well, that's a good point, though. Uh, uh, like, I've been saying this all series. I think the Leafs need to play with the lead um, just to get Montreal back on their heels a little bit. Uh, it seems like they're, the Montreal, obviously, the, the type of game they want to play is they want to get one goal, and then they want to sit back and completely just play defense. Um, and it's pretty noticeable because they've only got um, four goals in, in three games, right? So they're, they're not trying to outscore the Leafs because that's never going to happen, right? They, they're just purely trying to um, – they're, they're just trying to score literally one goal uh, or hopefully two and then uh, for them and then just shut play shutdown. So – so they're not trying to outscore the Leafs, but, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of that's due to Campbell's insane performance that we've seen. He probably has like over a 950 save percentage at this point. Um, the one goal did come 14 minutes in though. Suzuki, uh, I, I don't remember exactly who the defenseman was. I think it was Hall or maybe Bogosian. Um, just it was so Riley. Was, Riley. Okay. You didn't step up? Yeah, I didn't step up. I was Riley. about to say that. Yeah, um, and then, you know, just kind of a soft one for Cam Campbell to let in. Suzuki doesn't have the best shot, but, you know, those those are going to happen. And I think he had, like, almost 30 saves tonight. So, I mean, you, you got to let one go. Um, and then a few minutes later, complete turnaround. This is where the Leafs just stomped the Canadians in. They had a, um explosive period um, for the, in the second, and they just finished it off. Riley with an amazing goal from Marner and Brody. This was probably the first one we got to celebrate without getting spoiled um, by the goal, but uh, just an amazing play, passing around, great pressure, um, pass to Riley, cutting in, and that's what Riley does best, and it, it couldn't come at a better time. Did you guys have any opinions on that one? No, no that was a nice play. It was. It was a really nice play, and, and we went crazy, of course. Um, in the third period... Rolling into that really quick, just a complete shutdown period for the Leafs. You know, not very much offense, which I I mean, that's going to happen, especially when the Canadians are in desperate need of a goal. But they just played amazing defense, just blocking shots. Justin Hall at the end just laid down. He was like, I'm going to block this puck no matter what. And it really helped everyone just doing their part to defensively shut down the Habs. And it worked. Um, did you guys have any uh, other opinions on the third period or thoughts? 
Yeah, I think there's a lot of people after the game and um, Leaf fans and just like uh, analysts and whatever just saying like, oh, um, the Leafs played a terrible third period. The the Habs were all over them, all this stuff. But um, but like exactly what you said, in reality, it was just the Leafs holding on to a lead, right? It wasn't that the Leafs didn't – like it's obviously nice to get more goals – uh, and win by lots of goals, but there's also it is the playoffs, and sometimes you just have to play shutdown D, and and it 15 to two shots doesn't look good in the third period at all. But I don't think that's what they were trying to do. I think they were just saying like let's let's get the puck out of our end, let's try and play in the neutral zone, uh, let's just chip pucks in and and chase, and and that's all, right? So so I think they did that pretty perfectly. There were a lot of close calls though, so I don't. I don't necessarily like them trying to play shutdown because that's really not their game. Um, they, putting more and more pressure on it really is their game. But I think something that uh, it's a key point that a lot of people aren't thinking of is Montreal basically scores off the rush. That's the only way they have scored against the Leafs so far. Um, so letting them kind of play with it in, in, in our end and uh, get shots from the point and stuff. I mean, Campbell sees it, right? So uh, he, he did this game at least. So the strategy worked, right? If, if we're playing in their end, there's higher risk of giving up odd man rushes. So um, not giving up any odd man rushes is basically, you know, having to play a little bit in your own end and just kind of chipping and chasing and whatever, right? So always having guys back. And, and they didn't give up any odd man rushes in the third period, which is – a huge point that a lot of people are missing. So, yeah, that, that is true. A lot of the goals, um, like people have to understand as much as hockey is not about statistics. Sometimes it is right. Um, if you see a team's only scoring by rushes, just shut down the rushes. Right. Um, so, uh, some, I know some salty Habs fans are gonna, are gonna come at us, you know, with our strong opinions and, and that's obviously expected. Um, and we, we would love to hear your opinion, have a debate. You know, we love that, um, especially in the comments. Um, and, and that'll though, do it for uh, the Leafs game. They win 2-1. to one. Campbell gets his second playoff win. Leafs go up 2-1. Um, huge game by Campbell. And we will move to the, to the three stars or one star segment. I don't even know what it's called yet. But uh, Jude, would you like to start us off? Yeah, for sure. Well, I don't uh, I, I don't want to take away from you here, Eric. But, um, but I got to go with Jack Campbell as uh, – it's it's obviously it's it's an obvious pick. Um, he he had a great game. He had as many saves as the Carey Price, as he's been proclaimed uh, coming into this series. So you know it's staying neck and neck, and uh, having as many saves and less goals is is a big thing. And he's he's been steady throughout these playoffs, uh, and he was very steady in this game. Belly. Yeah, well, uh, Leafs win, so I've got my three stars. Uh, we're going to do three stars when they win. Um, so my my third star is Kerfoot. Uh, I think Kerfoot had uh, a really, really, really good game because when you think about it, um, Tavares is gone and Felino leaves uh, after warm-ups. And who's left center position is, is Kerfoot, and he's completely stepped up into that role. He had an amazing game. Uh, I don't think he was talked about once by the by the announcers or in between periods or anything, but he was completely noticeable to me at least. Uh, he was all over the place, hitting guys, um, you know, just doing exactly what he needed to do all game. So he had a really good game, I thought. Uh, I think he had an assist. Did yeah. he have an assist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he had an assist. Yeah. Um, and then brings me to my second star is Nylander. Nylander's just staying hot right now. Uh, you know he's 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 doing everything that he needs to do as a as a star and he's he's doing uh more than is expected of him three goals in three games you can't ask for much better than that and uh Campbell is my first star and Jude summarized it perfectly so I don't have to say anything about that all right well in this case I'm, I'm gonna pick two stars here then um you know we had one star three stars and now we have two stars um my second star I'm gonna have to go with uh, Justin Hall these are the two guys I can think of um, that, you know, deserve it the most. Justin Hall, 
um, put it all out on the line. And yes, he does make some mistakes sometimes, but he has fit perfectly into his top four role. And uh, I think, you know, just, just I, like he had a good game in general tonight, you know, Feli pointed out his, um, his turnover the first game. And then tonight, every time Feli would point something out, you know, he'd make the right, right choice. Um, so I feel like I just noticed him a lot more. And then uh, of course, at the end, that amazing block that I, I still can't get over just laid down there and took it from uh, Cole Caulfield. That sounded bad, but I, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> um, and then my first star, <laughs> I'm going to have to go with um, uh, Morgan Riley. You know, he stepped up when we needed to, and, you know, he didn't really step up when Suzuki scored, but, you know, he got it right back and stepped up into the play for the second goal. And then, obviously, he's an important part, him and Brody, to shutting down the Montreal Canadiens in um, in the third period. And I could even go with TJ Brody um, as my third star, but, you know, maybe honorable mention because, you know, that, that face he makes in the penalty box is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> Spotify listeners are punching air right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, but, sorry, yeah, what were you the, 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 no, I'm just saying that you reminded me um, when you were talking about Riley, there was just that everything basically happened in the second period. Uh, and the second period has been huge because um, I don't think there has been, there, there has been a couple of uh, first period goals in game two or sorry, in game one. Um, but the rest, like most majority of these goals have been scored in the second period. Uh, so so the second period has been a huge turning point in, in these past two games, three games. Um, so so that's just, that was something I wanted to point out was how, how uh, important scoring in the second period is. And then, um, you know, just gaining that lead and the Leafs have been able to do it the past two games is, is score in the second period to gain the lead. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. The Leafs have been uh, really good in the second period. So hopefully yeah. that continues. Yeah, that's that's true for a lot of teams as well. They're just better in some periods than others. And um, it's really cool to statistically look at that. Um, but we will wrap it up here unless, Jude, do you have any final thoughts? Eric's yeah. a stats guy. Sorry. Wow. Yeah, I'm guys. I'm I'm truly a stats guy. <laughs> yeah, Eric's a stats guy. <laughs> Anyways, guys, make sure you uh, go to manscape.com once again and check out our our uh, or sorry, use our code buds twenty for twenty percent off and free shipping. Check out all their awesome products for men's grooming. Um, if you are listening on or listening and watching on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, enter the jersey giveaway as well. Um, and if you're listening on Spotify. Thank you for listening and make sure you follow us. This has been the Buds in the Box. Leafs win 2-1 to one against the Habs. Bye for now. <laughs>